Please help me give a warm Moby Deacon's welcome to Wayfarer. <laughs> It's the winter solstice, and that used to be a big deal. Before we walked into rooms and, went <laughs> and flicked on the lights and had late night TV and iPods and smartphones, um, at this time of year in the bleak midwinter, there was no light when the sun went down. Uh, you brought in firewood, you filled the oil lamps, not many people had candles. Um, it was, you could call that dismal or you could call it cozy because around fires, people have conversations and they made music and they told stories. I was lucky when I was growing up because I had mentors. I had, I had storytellers. I had five generations, my great-great-grandmama on down. And I knew her when I was a little girl. And she came west in a wagon train. So I had these women who told stories and went, child? <laughs> <laughs> and would jerk me up short. Um, you know, they, uh, they cared about what happened with this little creature that was growing up. Um, and I've been many places in the world. And when I lost my home in Maine and I fell off the edge of the known world, it was scary. And I thought about it. I had that strong foundation of people who cared about me. Um, a lot of the stuff in the books is about mentoring, about making life, whatever it is, into full life and adventure. Now, initially in Maine, it felt more like a disaster. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, eventually I, I pulled it together and thought, well, I never would have done this in my right mind. Uh, now what can I learn while I'm and journeyed? I didn't know where I was going. I just headed out. So I came from a PowerPoint, Acadia National Park. And I thought, <laughs> Lord, bless me with the PowerPoint, please. And then I saw the gorge and I saw the mountain after a long, long journey and said, well, here I am. I thought I might start with a story from the first book. Some people call it the mother book because it's a little heavy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do that five generation story. Um, and then we'll, we'll come to here. We'll come to here. Wagon train west. Mm -hmm. Shoo, shoo, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. My great great grandmother's eyes softened my way. Her knobbly jointed hands rested on the chair's antimacassars that she'd crocheted. She leaned forward and did a Shaky rise from her chair, my mother looked alarmed. Hold my hands, honey. Great Mama held hers out. I jumped up and did. I was six years old. Looking up into her sun-weathered Texas face, she looked slender, stood there, and began swinging our hands as she sang in a quavery voice, Flies in the buttermilk, she flies you. <laughs> Child, we danced to that tune when the family traveled west in covered wagons 
all the way west from Missouri. Through Indian raids to Texas, the men would build a big fire in the center of the circled wagons. Women and girls baked biscuits and cornbread in Dutch ovens. At the smaller cook fires set near the wagon wheels, we made stews of wild game the men and boys had tracked. Deer and buffalo, rabbit, dove and quail, even rattlesnake, with wild onions from creek bottoms. When those big stars came out, a fiddler had stirred up in a banjo player, harmonica or two, oh, jigs they'd play and mournful ballads, country reels. The old folks listened, tapped a foot. Some sang, and the young folks danced. She moved her feet in little sideways steps. I looked down at our feet and followed. We sashayed in a circle around the living room on a day that held my deepest roots. Five generations of Texas women, my great-great-grandmother all the way down to me. It was oh, hot summertime. We all had tall grasses, glasses of sweet iced tea with a sweet sprig of mint from the garden. The glasses condensed moisture and felt good held against a hot forehead. Oh. Out in the garden, I had chased horny toads <laughs> down the corn rows, sat on my heels and watched crickets. Found a frog when I went to cut mint by the dripping faucet. The horn toad I'd caught felt dusty and dry, all prickly backed. It moves its legs as though swimming sand and blinked its ancient looking hooded eyes. I'd cupped my hands in front of the green brown frog. It lengthened its hind legs and leapt right in. Frog felt cool and smooth, kind of rubbery. I held its face close to mine, <laughs> and we considered one another. <laughs> I set it back in the shady mint bed. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It leaped deeper into the cool. My mother had had a different experience of my great-great-grandmother. She'd grown up thinking her stern and beady-eyed examples. You do as good as you look, girl. You'll do all right. <laughs> and the family pull up short. Your feet on the ground. Are you just passing through? <laughs> as so often seems to happen, as great mama near the end of her life, she also drew near the wonders of its beginning and cast a kinder eye on the time that was left to her. A long life, way up into her 90s. She had passed through the great buffalo herds, thundering to their own butchered end, had known Indian territory, the Texas Republic, and Texas statehood. Railroads <laughs> roared across the continent, linked up little towns and hauled cattle and cotton back to the cities. She had ogled, heard, and smelled the first horseless carriages beep, beep, with their brass lamps and running boards, and she'd seen the first Ford Model T trucks on the farms and the first fragile biplanes doing loop-de-loops above the county fair. When we helped her settle into her chair again, she reached in a pocket of her starched cotton dress and nodded to me to come close. Open your hand, child. She was not wealthy, but put in my hand a long life treasure. It was her own gold thimble. 
That trip to Texas, I had flown by my lonesome in a metal airplane, back when seating included round tables and comfy chairs. As we waited for takeoff, my daddy stood in his dress uniform, holding my hand, and um, entrusted me to a trimly turned out stewardess. I looked out the window, beguiled, and waved goodbye to the Naval Academy. My mama had already flown to the old home place to take care of her mama, her daddy, and her little brother. I was to spend most of first grade there, for my, my grandmother was dying. Finally, one day, when my mama was settling her own mother's frail self into the old clawfoot bathtub, she heard, Would you do me a favor, honey? Why, sure, mama. You go back home now. Will you do that? I can't hold on any longer. I still have the photo taken that hot, still summer day at my great-great-grandmother's, five generations of Texas women. In my own life, I've, whoo, I've let a lot of stuff go. But not that, nor a little gold thimble that once made many a patchwork quilt. Skip to my loom, my darling. Thank you.